Life. I'm Dean Wilson. I'm so glad you are here. So glad you're with us. Whether you're on the airwaves here in Santa Barbara, California, where we are, or joining us from all over the world. I think last I checked, there was about 103 countries. So you're joining us from all over the place at goodlifetelevision.org and YouTube and all the other places. And you can follow, find us on the social media platforms as well. But um, we're here to do good. We're here to bring good news, to talk to overcomers and entrepreneurs and people doing great stuff, people who are in the midst of um, tough times that are battling through, which might be where you are. And we hope to bring you some, some hope. Um, and, and shining light in the darkness is, is something else that I think that is happening here at Good Life, is that we're not afraid to talk about subjects or issues that are difficult. And a lot of stuff's going on in the world right now, and a lot of people are suffering, but there's goodness, there's hope, there's life, there's joy. Uh, even amidst the suffering. And so that's what we believe, and that's why we're here. And so we're glad you're with us wherever you are. I'm really excited to, about my guests today. Uh, Chuck and Sally Cook are with me. Uh, they've started something called Hope Refuge, which we're going to talk all about. But welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having great, us. Yeah, thank, it's great to meet you guys. And I, I told you I spent a little of my day yesterday reading all about you. And uh, Chuck, cool. both of you had really successful you know, careers. I don't know if it's like a first half, second half thing, but I mean, <laughs> whatever, your previous life. It, it, Fourth quarter. <laughs> no, I don't think so. But you, 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 Chuck's had great success in business um, and, 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 and Sally as well. And I was reading about, I mean, you've kind of done several different things from teaching and radio and mm -hmm. hosting and literary work. That's right. and it's been an adventure. This has been an adventure for you guys, hasn't it? Yes. Life is an adventure, Dean. Yes, it is. I love that. <laughs> We're finding it's getting more and more of an adventure as we go. <laughs> yes. Sometimes if it's harder, it can be easier to just say, well, it's just, it's an adventure. Yes. It's kind of a nicer term for it. Yes. But yeah, the 15-year plan hasn't quite worked out for me. <laughs> right. I don't know if any of my plans have exactly worked out. Uh, but then talk about kind of your, your careers and where you came from. And I mean, I know, I, I, like I said, I've read about both of you, but Talk about kind of your, your life and kind of what, what happened on your, on your road to where you are now. You go, go for it. Go for, okay, <laughs> go for it. I'll start. Yes, well, you can hear that I'm not from America originally. Right. I actually was born here, but um, I grew up in England. And uh, my first step out into the world of work was in education. And I loved it, absolutely loved it. So I was teaching primary age, middle school age in England, which is 12-year-olds. Um, and just moved up very quickly and on just um, working with to start with I worked with um, children who probably came from a lot more privilege um, but I spent a year in Africa uh, after about four years and it really wrecked my heart for um, poverty underprivileged youth at risk and um, I came back to London and went straight into the inner city which was the making of me and um, had a, a great career there and um, but whilst I was there, whilst I was in London, I always had this kind of inkling, this pull to the entertainment industry. And so I wanted to explore that more. And so over about the space of about five years, I just started testing the waters and um, ended up doing some radio work, uh, being a radio personality, and then um, did some TV work and worked on a, um, a channel where we were doing a morning program. And so I was kind of moving into part-time education, part-time entertainment industry. And when I felt confident that this was where I was being called and this was a, the right step for me, um, I stepped out and it was very quickly that I ended up coming to Hollywood and that was in 2007. And I only came over, and this is the story of my life, I actually only came over, I thought, for three months, four months, <laughs> to do this executive track around producing in, um, in movies and TV and ended up staying here. So I ended up getting a job and ended up meeting my husband and um, I've been working at DreamWorks Animation after that for four or five years and um, just loved it. But yes, again, as you can hear, my 15 year plan didn't quite work out. But so that's a bit of me before we had our hearts broken for sex trafficking. That was definitely yeah. that's my background that kind of led to that. So you, your, your time in Africa, something changed in your heart. Isn't that amazing yeah. what, how that can happen? Yeah. That, that all of a sudden perspective shifts, yeah. which I think can be such a gift. Yeah. 
some, I mean, that's a whole other conversation. But yeah. Chuck, what about you? Talk about, I, I know you had a lot of success in business. And yeah, let, let's you talk know, about early on in life, I, uh, while I was going to college at Arizona State. I got a summer job brokering IBM computers and uh, mainframes. And it uh, didn't take long, and success was kind of before me. Ended up uh, getting full time into the position and then opened an office for him a, a year later out here in California. And, a year later, resigned and started my own business, um, wow. brokering computers. And then 10 years later after that, we ended up creating a software company to manage shipping systems for major corporations, Fortune 500 companies across America. Wow. And uh, yeah, so that was uh, kind of my heads down uh, part of my life. And then after that, I um, got an opportunity to work with a friend of mine producing a film. I'd never been in the film industry. and they. Set me up as a co-producer. <laughs> there you were. Oh, well, is bombing here. Uh, off I went. Yeah, is this so Meet Me in Miami? Is this Meet Me in Miami? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it was just a rom romantic comedy we created, and um, that's, there's a long story there. But um, shortly after we uh, finished the creating it, we were kind of working through the distribution concepts, and we just felt in our heart we're going to do something a little different. And instead of doing a traditional um, distribution, we just decided, can, could we possibly turn the red carpet upside down and have the less fortunate work the red carpet instead of the celebrities? Wow. So we started, we went, we tested it in Texas, um, worked with Cinemark, and they opened the whole mm -hmm. Cineplex for us. And we rolled the kids up in uh, limousines and got on the red carpet, and we had celebrities, Dallas Cowboys, players, and all on the side celebrating uh, these kids as they got out on the limo, wow. Jumbotrons, and NASCAR and it was no way. it was a full on production and it was so successful other cities said, Hey, can we do this in our city? Because it really rallied the community and we just that was my first tug into the nonprofit world. We just wow. started to kind of fall into that and again kind of did something in my heart as well. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was kind of jumped into that kind of whole thing for about another ten years. We Worked with uh, 43 professional sports teams. We did events on Monday Night Football. We it just it kind of blew up in this this whole giving away campaign, just helping less fortunate kids and honoring them and letting them be. You know, um, I guess you don't have to tell a kid what it's like to what what what, what to feel like when they walk the red carpet. Right. They, they kind of know. That yeah. they're, the, they're the center of attention. Isn't and that it's beautiful? Awesome. It was really really fun. Wow. And um, shortly after that, I kind of got involved with. Uh, doing a child sponsorship program in Africa. You know, at this point I hadn't met my wife, but was doing something in Mozambique, Africa with Iris Ministries and worked with them for a couple of years, got that off the ground and then uh, got married. And uh, shortly after that, we got involved with, uh, we, I guess we could jump in a little bit. Yeah. Went to a little church over in, in uh, Los Angeles and somebody got up and gave an announcement. And there was two facts that we remember. You know, mm -hmm. There's only. Uh, there was the. What was it? There was only it. twelve. Um, yeah, the the fastest growing criminal industry in the USA is mm -hmm. trafficking of minors. And she also said the average age of entry is twelve years 12 old. Twelve years old. And we literally looked at each other and went, "What is she talking about? Where's is America? Yeah. You know, Africa I, I maybe." Taught, she goes, "I taught twelve year olds. She must have misspoke." Right. You know, she. We just couldn't believe it. Yeah. You know, it's it's just, shocking. Yeah. So we went up to her and said, "Please tell us we heard you wrong." And she started to tell us everything that was happening on our doorstep in Hollywood, right under our noses. And it was just some moments are just landmark moments, aren't they? Yeah, I right. don't know why that seemed to hit us so much, but we were in the car on the way home and we were like, if this is true, because we're going to need to do our own homework, then this changes everything. So you that was the beginning. You just can't do nothing. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh my gosh, we just can't just let this go by. So that's where this all started, mm -hmm. is that announcement at church. 2013. <laughs> we remember the day very, very well. It'll never, that'll never escape our memory. Wow. Because we then spent like, gosh, like five to six weeks or so just researching and like you were doing yesterday and we just went yeah. into the depths of it and met some of the survivors, read the testimonies, their books and realized, wow, this really is modern day slavery at its worst and it's happening to our kids our american born bred children here in america under our noses and it's hidden right 
and we were like, wow, this is modern day slavery at its worst. And so we, for us, it was a faith step. We were just like, God, we're in. We don't know what that means. We're assuming it's entertainment. It's a yes, but what is that? <laughs> right, what right. am I saying yes to? <laughs> right, right, right. And, that, and that's, and that's a beautiful part. I, my previous guest, that's what we were talking about, is just that availability mm. to, you know, if you have a, a, a tender heart, you know. Right. I think it seemed like God was working on you, with that, starting with Africa yes. and working on you with lifting up kids in yes. the inner city and kind of tenderizing your heart to, and then to the place where he said, okay, now here's, here it is. You're you right. Know, You're which right. is interesting. I, in fact, I'm going to preach for yes. a second, I think. <laughs> Over it, yeah. um, but, you know, I, my, my, my old pastor in Gate, Gateway Church in, in uh, Dallas, mm -hmm. uh, outside of Dallas, uh, would preach a sermon last week, and he was talking about anointing and calling. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he was talking about sometimes you're anointed to do something, but you don't do it for 14 years or 10 years or seven years or six years or something like that. There can be a period of preparation mm -hmm. where it's like from there to here. That seems a little bit like what I'm hearing. Like, you know, here's, here's the hearts are changed. Little heart surgery over here. Little heart surgery <laughs> over here. And then here you are now the church announcement happens and it's like here, here it is, you know, which is, that's a beautiful story. Yes. But, um, okay. So 2013. So what, what do you end up doing? I mean, how, how does this start? Well, a few, you can a go few ahead. months later, um, or a few well, we weeks. found out, didn't we, about the uh, oh, yeah, the event? Yeah. So yes. a few few weeks later, I get a phone call, um, and we get invited to an event in Los Angeles. Fifty girls just rescued, law enforcement, um, anyone judges, who, anyone anybody who involved. Them. I mean. LA has realized at this point we're really losing a battle and we don't even know really what we're fighting because this trafficking mm. is hitting us like a tsunami. I mean, girls are getting, pimps are getting girls arrested on purpose to go recruit in these different um, juvenile, halls. juvenile halls and they don't oh know what to do. Gosh. You know, they're just like, oh my gosh, there's just devastation everywhere. So we spent a couple days at that event and, you know, one of the things we learned there, there was what, 325,000 girls trafficked a year in the United States. And um, there was 500. There, well, oh, we, we, yeah, there, they were saying at the time there was 100 beds that had a program for this demographic of girls. 100, 100. beds in terms of facilities. No, period. 100 beds Just in beds. all of America Bed, to serve it. this particular population serve and their complex needs. Oh girls. my gosh. In other words, they wouldn't fill it with someone who was just doing drug rehab. They, it was right. specifically designed for this complex trauma. 100. That's it. So then there was the idea. Well, it's like, no, you just realized. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we thought a bit more at the time. But. Well, then, then, uh, then not too long after that, I got a call from a friend who had met Mozambique, Africa at an orphanage and just calls and says, hey, you know, I've, you know, we were just kind of catching up, hadn't talked in, I don't know, five, seven years and just kind of catch up. He says, you know, I, well, I found this facility. I really want to work with at-risk kids. It's you know, it's here in Santa Barbara, and he starts describing, you know, it's, this, it's got a CUP for 124 beds. And I'm like, oh, that's when, the, that's when stupidity <laughs> <laughs> kicks in. The light bulb goes on. We could double the beds in America right. with one swoop, right? And uh, <laughs> little did we know what the journey was going to look like, but that's what triggered the whole thing. So we met with the owner, didn't we? Yeah. So shortly after that, he set us, set a meeting up with, set us up with a meeting with the owners and, and their hearts were broken and, uh, in exactly the same way straight away. And his reaction was, Oh my gosh, I've just spent three years convincing the board to sell this place. How am I going to convince them to unsell? I mean, his heart was so impacted straight away him to keep it, right. you know, because I want to do this, you know? Wow. And that was the beginning of the road to seeing how we could open the, this facility um, and was a program needed, you know. And so we spent a lot of time sort of working mm -hmm. with people in L.A. and other nonprofits. Um, is this needed? What do you think? And everybody was like, it's, it's everyone's desperate. Um, we never thought, Dean, that would be part of our plan. We just thought we were helping, like, as producers that we are, that we would be helping bring it together. Right. Um, but that wasn't the case. And so, how? So you got the 
access to this took property. It was about three years going three back years. and forth mm -hmm. while it was still for sale. So we were getting working with the board, trying to figure out how to make this. Open. Listen, we'd never done this before, so right. we're in a situation where we're trying to communicate what we want to do, and right. we're you know we're just trying to figure it out on the run with them, you know. Yeah. But it took about three years in and out of escrows, thinking we had it, we're going to lose it, we had it, and then we lost it, and then finally. They flipped us the keys one day randomly and says, okay, we're tired of you praying out all our buyers. <laughs> <laughs> we're tired of you praying out all of our escrows. And, uh, <laughs> we'll give you we a year. We can't be you, we'll join you. I we'll we'll give it. you a year to figure it out. Here's the keys. Really? Yeah. And that was 2015. And that's when we moved wow. up here to Santa Barbara. We came up and we lived on the property straight away. We were, we thought, well, let's, let's try it out. Because one of the weird, craziest things was mm. as soon as we had that happened mm -hmm. we found out there was a moratorium on group homes for minors so we couldn't have opened a facility if we wanted to because they were changing the way um group homes were structured and um so we were like what do we do now what do, what do we do so we ended up um we did a big retreat for um the entertainment industry just to try out the place and work you know the whole focus was on sex trafficking and that was amazing. That gave us a feel of the place. Um, and then we had to decide, are we staying up there? Or are we going back to L.A.? You know, um, even though we're going to try and secure this place. And we kind of just looked at each other one day and said, you know, how do you feel about staying? And Chuck was like, you know what? I feel like God might be inviting us into something, I think was his words. And I went, I feel the same. You know, wow. which was really unusual because it's remote. It's in the middle of nowhere. We didn't have any internet at the time. I mean, I'm a city chick. He's a city boy. <laughs> We're like, what are we doing? And, but we felt there was more like what God wants us to be part of something. And yeah. so we decided to stay up there. And that was um, moving into 2016. And we started doing retreats with girls, um, working with other nonprofits bringing them up, just giving them three, four days of what does love look like? And we have high ropes courses and um, swimming pool and all these great things to give them different experiences and beautiful hikes. It's the most beautiful setting. It's in the middle of um, the country and it's got the most beautiful views. And um, we just had, you know, we just saw great things happen then. And we were like, gosh, what would it be like if we had them here all the time? And that's when the actual licensing um, the state changed their uh, licensing requirements and they opened up what's called a short-term residential therapeutic program and that's what we applied for that's what we're licensed to be now and uh, what's so short term a year well they, they define it as six months um, but I think our average is about nine the yeah, aim is for it not to be long you know right. that the aim is to not but to have just mm -hmm. a short therapeutic focus um, and we get the girls through social services and probation. Oh, so, really? Yeah. So they're referred to you? They're referred. Mm -hmm. So we have a license for the whole state of California. Oh, my gosh. So we were originally licensed for 24 beds, um, which is one of the largest in California um, or in the nation that we know of. And then, um, then we opened our doors right when everyone else shut theirs, Dean, in COVID. Oh, really? So in March 2020, <laughs> everyone Here else goes go. into lockdown. We go into, oh no, we're going. We're opening up. Isn't wow. that crazy? And you, and you ha do, do, do you have 24? Is it less usually? Is it half? No, is it? no it's, it's, it, it fluctuates. Yeah. And it, uh, We've gone right down right now because we're in the midst of a transition. Um, we're partnering with another organization called Olive Crest who are coming in to manage and operate the program. Oh, so good. The, uh, they're a large organization out of yeah. LA that uh, manages. Yes. Yeah, good, it's, it's phenomenal. Yeah, we're super. So, so, what do you do? So, the, the this young girl walks in the door. Does she have to be there, or is she choosing to be there? Uh, a combination. 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 So, what what is the goal? Like, you know, here here she comes. What are you trying to do? I mean, love for her is probably mm -hmm. the the quickest answer. But mm -hmm. what does it look like? just looks like love. What does love look like? It's just, I think when a girl comes in, the, their trauma is very different from girl to girl. Um, but at the end of the day, the abuse is deep. And you can see it in their behaviors and how they react. Um, one of the big things they like to do is they run. 
So that's their, if things are going well, they run. If things are going bad, they run. And that's where they kind of find safety. Mm. And so being in this remote location, it's the first of its kind like it, um, it created an opportunity for the girls not to be able to run and have to face their stuff. So for the very first time, instead of being able to run, mm. they're having to kind of unpack and kind of peel the onion back and start dealing with some of the trauma that's been going on in their lives. And we have therapists and specialists there to kind of walk this through. And we got amazing staff that put up with a lot of crazy behaviors well, that are just off the chart. But, you know, I was saying to her, you know, what we do is super messy, yeah. but the result is the most amazing thing you can ever see. Yeah. It's it's got to be really messy, and God brings great beauty from really messes yes. and chaos, and I, I think that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Our main, I think, you know, one of one of the main aims of the program is to stabilize them um, and to address their complex trauma mm -hmm. um, enough for them to be able to go, come into a family, and whether that's reuniting with their family. Um, or into a foster family, that's the aim, because we all know that's where a child fully heals, is in the family. Right, right. Um, for a lot of our girls, sometimes the family has been where their exploitation has happened or mm -hmm. has been um, just behind some of that, and so they might be moving into a foster family. And so when we f they first come to us, they're not in a stabilized place to do that. They run, they, you know, they act out, and everything else that goes with that, and, you know, you, who wouldn't want to medicate the kind of pain that they're facing? Right. Mm -hmm. And they don't even know that they're exploited, Dean. I mean, that's the big thing. They don't. They're not coming to us, you know, Say looking something. for help. Um, they, you know, we're often the enemy, but part of the enemy group because we're, right. from, you know, separating them from a boyfriend they want to, who they think loves them and um, a lifestyle that they think is good for them, because, you know, that's all they've known or that's how they've been manipulated and. Um, it's hard. So that's the aim is to try and get them to a place where they su can successfully reintegrate and more healing can happen. Because obviously not, yeah. you're not going to be find all that in nine months, you know, but wow. it has to be that safe place. Oh, that's powerful. And to believe for girls in that situation, mm -hmm. to believe for what's possible, that mm -hmm. there can be healing. I'm going to cling to it. Even if you behave like this and this and th because I, I, I would liken this a little bit to, well, I'm really big into the special needs community we have a special mm. needs daughter mm -hmm. and we went to this institute in Philadelphia many times to get her help with treatment and special needs kids who are very brain injured come from all over the world mm -hmm. so this is very interesting there's no handicapped parking spots okay. because we're all handicapped <laughs> <laughs> that's, the that's, parking lot needs to be blue <laughs> there's, 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 yeah we don't need handicapped parking because we're all handicapped which is a powerful spiritual truth about yes. all of us being broken yes. which is another subject but uh but when we go there you see these autistic kids banging their literally banging their heads against the wall mm -hmm. the behaviors because of the injury mm -hmm. you know a kid doesn't slobber or lash out, bang their head against the wall because they think it's a good idea. Right. They're injured. Mm -hmm. Some of these autistic kids, they can hear the TV when it's off. Mm -hmm. So this, this hearing is so sensitive that they're literally going crazy in their own right. head because mm -hmm. they're, right? Mm -hmm. Or a cerebral palsy kid who's spazzing or tight or right. loose or slobbering or yeah. why do they? Well, because they're injured. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's something really tr truthful about people are going to behave certain ways because they're injured mm -hmm. and to believe for healing I mean so you're dealing with really hurt mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. it takes a lot of faith and stick to itiveness and roll up my sleeves and to to get into that kind of work mm -hmm. I mean I'm mm. I admire you greatly I'm not trying to flatter you I, I truly people that dive into the deep waters I mean Janet Craig who's doing this movie called wake up right now and mm -hmm. diving into shining the light it's we need this I mean we need people to say I'm gonna go where the mess is and mm -hmm. yeah it's messy and, and I may have nine out of ten days where I go put my head on the pillow and go what in the world are we doing mm -hmm. you know this girl did this and she's doing that and she's doing and 
What? Oh yeah, we're, we're crazy. constantly asking them. Don't, don't go, the, <laughs> don't, do do? uh, let me just say, on TV, <laughs> yes. don't think you're crazy. Keep going because I mean, this is so admirable, mm -hmm. the work you're doing. I'm, I'm just preaching right now, kind of, but I'm, I'm, I'm so inspired that you stepped out and did it, you know, from a church announcement, mm -hmm. that you stepped out and did it. Okay, so that's enough for me, but what's the what's the what is the the vision if you have one i mean you you want to care for the ones that god brings to your doorstep i mean maybe that is the vision but i mean are you thinking about more beds are you thinking about what's the what's the thought process a good depends, question depends on the day good time. yeah <laughs> <laughs> right I think, <laughs> I think our heart is definitely i mean every city in america needs a facility like this i mean the yeah. amount of girls that are abused have no place to go mm. um, needs to be addressed has yeah. to be addressed. Um, can't sweep it under the carpet anymore. And so just a, bringing the awareness and maybe supporting people that want to do something like this. We'd, right. you know, we'd love to come alongside anybody who wanted to do something like this and bring our education and what we've learned to the table. Yeah. And that's part of, that's the, you know, one of the main reasons of partnering with Olive Crest is um, just their history in this arena of human services mm -hmm. and yeah. um, not only just with the housing that we're offering but then we you know one of the questions we've always been asking since we've opened is well what about the aftercare what about because some of them don't fit naturally into a foster home mm -hmm. some of them do, do not have the family to go back to and what they need is transitional housing but if we could connect that with our program where it was more of a seamless experience and maybe therapists to start with you know tra crossed so all the um, wraparound services would follow them so and it would right. be here so they would it would there would be a safety yeah. rather than going to another program somewhere else but they're almost starting again we think i mean that's something that you know olive crest already have going and they would help bring that into santa barbara mm -hmm. and just more of that wraparound space whilst we look at the development, and that's you know one of the things that our passion is, is how do we develop this? How do we address this issue? Because to address this issue, we went straight after the biggest problem, which was there's no housing for the girls. They're the victims and there's nothing for them. So we went straight after that. But another passion of ours is we've got to stop this as a society, right. as a culture. And that starts with saying, well, we've got to recognize that there's a demand. And as long as right. there's a demand, there's right. going to be a supply. Right. And the supply is just shifting according right now, according to what's allowed and what's not. But we've got to stop the demand. And the reality is 99.3% of the demand is male. And right. so at some point we have to go after that in our nation and say, you know what? Yep. We don't accept this. Right. And we're going to have um, penalties that meet what we really believe rather than right now it's... Um, it's like a couple of hundred dollars. It's the same as fishing without a license. I mean, oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. If they get a f fine. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of healing, I mean, they're, they're, we need a lot of healing on that side of the yeah. equation. So yeah. We have a we have a passion to see a lot of things done, but right now we're like, okay, let's just breathe and yeah. see what do God's wanting to do. Thing. What does He want to do? Yeah. Yeah. The the olive crest part that seems critical in terms of, I mean, you're a little bit of a proof of concept. I mean, aren't you? I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and we're, we do a lot of low income housing and without that property manager, it life's a lot more hard, difficult, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> yeah. so the, the, because, you know, there's one thing to, to be in the mess. There's nothing to be in every inch of the mess. You know, right. you, you need experts and partners to, to help operate. But mm -hmm. well, that's fascinating. So 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 it's Hope Refuge, which by the way is a great name. Uh, Hope Refuge is what, what is the website? Is our website just for Hope Refuge? HopeRefuge.org. HopeRefuge.org is the mm -hmm. website. So it's 24 beds uh, here outside of uh, Santa Barbara, California, where we're sitting. I'm so excited about what you're doing. Um, God bless you. Go in faith, because uh, uh, this is really needed. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Great Thank to meet you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks Dean. To meet you. We'll see you next time.